Hello, my name is Andrew Pleva, and this is my math honors presentation on the mathematics behind rock climbing. The first thing I'm going to talk about is something known as the fall factor. The fall factor is mainly used when lead climbing. As you can see here, I'm lead climbing the Battle of the Bulge in the Dells. To calculate for fall factor, you need to take the distance from your last bolt, multiply that number by 2, and divide that number by the total rope length. In my case, I am 1 meter from my last bolt. Then I'll multiply that number by 2, which results in 2. Then I'll divide by the total rope length, which is 7 meters which results in a fall factor of 0 0.2857, which is a really safe fall factor for me and my equipment. Here is a video of a local expert climber putting in a piece of gear, setting his fall factor to zero. Most routes in the Dells are trad climbs. A trad climb requires you to set pieces of gear in order to safely complete the climb. If this climber did not put in this piece of gear, he would have fallen to the ground from that height. The main tools climbers use to safely reduce their fall factor to zero are nuts and cams. Cams flex with springs and wires, while nuts are just stationary. Here, Mr. Carruthers is demonstrating how he utilizes his nuts and cams. We're pulling it in this direction, so if it pulled further this direction, it would get tighter. Now nuts, you, you'd asked if there's if they're they're more effective or less effective. They're different uses. Before cams came along, all they had was this static kind of gear. So some are smooth, some are rounded, some work better for different things. And it's in. You get to the point where you're setting gear as a rock climber, and you see that, and you're just like, oh yeah, this is the one that you yell down to your belay partner. I got a great piece of gear in. <laughs> Next, I'll be talking about anchors and the American Death Triangle. An anchor can be built with gear, or it can be pre-made at the top of a route. Here, Mr. Carruthers builds an anchor with two cams and one nut. Leave it there. Beautiful. Okay, so that's a nice set piece. You know, each strand is probably, let's just call it, say generically, it's 2,000 pounds. Okay? So that is 2,000 pounds. So now that would be 4,000 pounds. Now the strength here, what do you think that is? Two, four, six, eight, right? And then if we did it again, so you'd get your 16, right? So that's what you're talking about as far as doubling up your webbing or your cord. You know, if this was a piece of flat webbing, the same thing would apply, okay? You're gonna come in here, you're gonna clip, clip, Clip. Right. So this is where we would start talking about the American Death Triangle, right? What's that even middle piece even doing? Not really much. nothing. What's the strength right here? 2,000 pounds. Not that good. Because your body weight falling, you know, at a you know six foot fall, you know, 150 pound guy, you're going to generate a thousand pounds probably. So we can go pull this, and we can pull this. And we can clip that. What do we just do there? Now all of them are directionally loaded. The American Death Triangle states that if your two pieces of gear are 150 degrees apart from your focal point, then the forces will be doubled. If your gear is 120 degrees apart from the focal point, then the load will be the same on each piece of gear. If your pieces of gear are 90 degrees or less, then this would be considered optimal, as each piece of gear would share the load. And so to be a load sharing system, you would tie a knot in it. And we can't even do that on this because we don't have enough to tie the knot, right? And it takes your angle past 90 degrees, which that's about 90 degrees. It takes it past 90 degrees. Here, Mr. Carruthers modified the anchor to increase the distance between the focal point and the pieces of gear resulting in a degree that is less than 90 degrees. There's no shock factor, right? That one didn't get shock loaded. So big advantage, okay? So if that's questionable and that's questionable, you're sharing them and then one fails, it's still gonna remain, it's, there's, no, there's no shock load, okay? Next, I will be introducing the Grigri. A Grigri is an assisted braking belay device 
manufactured by Petzl, designed to help secure rock climbing and rappelling. Its main characteristics is its clutch that assists in breaking under a shock load. The Grigory works by pinching the rope when it's moving quickly, such as in a fall, making it an assisted braking belay device. This function distinguishes it from the traditional belay devices, also known as a ATC or a stitch plate. Last, I will be talking about ropes and their strengths when various knots are put into them. This right here is a straight rope. This would be considered at 100% strength. This is a figure 8 knot. This would be considered at 70 to 75% strength. Here we have a double bowline, which would be considered at 70 to 75% strength. A double fisherman's knot would be considered at 65 to 70% strength. A tape knot, which is also known as a water knot, would be considered at 60 to 70% strength. A simple overhand knot would be considered from 60 to 65% strength. A clove hitch would be considered also as 60 to 65% strength. And finally, a square knot would be considered at 45% strength. Thanks for watching my video project for Math Honors Club. I hope you are able to learn about the important role mathematics play in rock climbing.